Good morning. Welcome to our Sunday School class today. Uh, I am so happy to uh, have you here joining us as we study the Word of God. Uh, today we will continue our series on the book of 2 Samuel. And uh, we are now in lesson number 15. Okay, lesson number 15, the trail of tears. And we will cover uh, chapter 15, verse 13 through uh, chapter 16. And then towards the end of uh, chapter 16. So uh, it's a very, very interesting study. And I'm sure that you will learn many things as I have uh, while I was studying the lesson. And uh, trust that the Lord will uh, use this lesson, the Word of God today, to just speak to our hearts and uh, to challenge us and to remind us and to draw us closer to the Lord and, and, and above all that we would apply these things in our hearts and in our lives. Okay, but before we continue, uh, let's go to the Lord in prayer and ask Him to bless our time together today. Let's pray. Father God, Lord, again, we bow before you, we praise you, we thank you for this day. And Father, as we study our lesson now, again, we ask that you would be the one to uh, guide us and teach us and uh, may the Spirit of God be our uh, teacher today and then open our eyes of understanding and give us wisdom dear Lord to to uh, know these things and above all help us to apply it in our hearts again we thank you uh, for your people today and father we just give you the praise and the glory in Jesus name amen amen okay lesson number 15 uh, the trail of tears now uh, we'll have a brief uh, lesson review of our previous lesson so that uh, we can connect it with our lesson today. As you will know, now we are studying this this book uh, chapter by chapter, and so last Sunday we we uh, ended that uh, chapter, the first part of chapter 15, and so we will uh, continue it today. But uh, by way of uh, review, we found that um, Absalom, David's son, uh, the prince. Um, use deception to promote himself and win the hearts of the people. And we found that uh, how Absalom, because of his pride and uh, his um, uh, hatred and his ambition, he self-promoted himself. He endeared himself to the people. But unfortunately, uh, by doing so, he was also discrediting, he was undermining his father. And, um, but he, he wanted to promote himself uh, through deception. And uh, the Bible says that he stole the hearts of the people. And so we learned that. And also we learned that um, through the process of time, after several years, Absalom gathers an army, an army of supporters. And then he declares a rebellion. He declares a rebellion in Hebron. Uh, we, we learn how that he asked his father one day, he said, Father, can I go to Hebron, um, the place of my birth? And there I would uh, offer a sacrifice or fulfill my vow to the Lord. Uh, of course, he lied. He deceived his father. And so his father gave him uh, permission, I'm sure. His father was pleased, David was pleased when he heard that Absalom wanted to go back to Hebron and offer or fulfill his vow. And so he, he gave him permission, but um, actually Absalom went there, gathered his people, and then he proclaims a rebellion. And since he has already um, gathered a significant amount of supporters, he became very strong. And then after that, uh, we know that he, Absalom, he sets to attack David in Jerusalem uh, to take over the throne. So uh, that was his plan. Uh, he couldn't wait uh, because of his um, ambition, his pride and his hatred. Uh, he wanted to take over the throne, to wrestle the throne away from his father. And that's what he set to do. And so now we'll move into our lesson today. We will continue. We will start in uh, start from Second Samuel chapter fifteen, verse number thirteen. So we will read the scripture today, and uh, make some notes and comments, and just allow the Lord to speak uh, to our hearts. Okay, let me read uh, verse thirteen. And there came a messenger to David, saying, "The hearts of the men of Israel are after Absalom." And David said unto all his servants that were with him at Jerusalem, Arise and let us flee, for we shall not else escape from Absalom. Make speed to depart, lest he overtake us suddenly and bring evil upon us, and smite the city with the edge of the sword. 
And the king's servant said unto the king, Behold, thy servants are ready to do whatsoever my lord the king shall appoint. And the king went forth and all his household after him. And the king left ten women, which were concubines, to keep the house. So now we have some points here. Point number one is David flees Jerusalem. Now, when he learned that his son, the son whom he loved, is a stage of rebellion and wants to attack Jerusalem and attack him and, and um, take over the throne, David decided to just flee. Now, we have some points here uh, to make. Um, David is now over 60 years old, as we have learned. And uh, at this point, he does not want a war with his son Absalom. Um, he would rather flee Jerusalem than defend it. If he was younger, and in his younger days, I would say David would defend it. But now, uh, being old, um, he doesn't want a direct confrontation with his son. And we also find that even though his relationship with God is restored, remember after he uh, committed that sin with Bathsheba and Uriah, and when he was confronted with his sin, he confessed to God. He confessed and forsake his sin, forsook his sin, and God forgave him. But it seems, it seems, seems to me that David is still bothered by the guilt of his sin. Now, Bible scholars would would uh, put the date of his sin with Bathsheba at around uh, his mid fifties to late fifties. So uh, the event. Um, that happened between him and Bathsheba and this event with Absalom happened within 12 years. So the memory uh, was still fresh with David and it seems that he was bothered by that guilt of his sin. Um, and and it, has, it has affected him. Um, it has affected the way he dealt with Amnon, the way he dealt with uh, Tamar, and now the way he dealt with Absalom. And so uh, he decided, David decided to flee instead of fighting and risk destroying the city. That's what he said. I don't want to fight my son. I don't want to stay in Jerusalem and defend Jerusalem because uh, uh, many people will be affected. Many people will die and even the city will be destroyed. And so he decided to just leave before Absalom arrives. And so he took with him his household and those loyal to him. Now let's continue reading verse 18. And all his servants passed on beside him, and all the Cherethites, and all the Pelethites, and all the Gittites, 600 men which came after him from Gath, passed on before the king. Then said the king to Ittai, the Gittite, Wherefore goest thou also with us? Return to thy place, and abide with the king, for thou art a stranger, and also an exile. Now let's read verse 21. And Ittai answered the king and said, As the Lord liveth, and as my lord the king liveth, surely in what place my lord the king shall be, whether in death or life, even there also will thy servant be. Wow, well, what, a, what a very good uh, example and testimony of Itai. But here we see some points also. Some of the people who went with David are actually mighty men. Remember those men that uh, went with David when he was running away uh, from Saul? The um, Bible says... Uh, he gathered a, a small army and men from different places came to David and eventually became his mighty men. And so some of those who went with David as he fled Jerusalem were his mighty men. Um, and we find Itai. Itai was a, um, a man that was uh, loyal to David. And it is a picture. Itai is a picture of those who stay loyal even when things go bad. And uh, that is true. There are people like that. And so our prayer should be, may we be like Itai, a loyal friend. Or may we have Itais in our lives. You know, each one of us need, need a friend. And we need loyal friends. And so uh, uh, let's pray that we be like Itai. Okay? And so he decided that he would stay with David. He would be with David regardless of what happens. Now let's continue. Verse 22. And David said to Itai, Go and pass over. And Itai the Gittite passed over and all his men and all the little ones that were with him. So marami siyang kasama. Um, and uh, they passed, meaning they passed over. 
and they went with David and all the country wept with a loud voice and all the people passed over. The king also himself passed over the brook Kidron and all the people passed over toward the way of the wilderness. Okay, we find here that they passed. You see, if you are familiar with the topography of uh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem is located on a hill and then it is surrounded by valleys. And, and on the eastern part of Jerusalem was the Valley of Kidron. And uh, there's a brook there at the bottom of the valley. There's a brook. And then after you cross the brook, then you go up to the other side on the eastern part of Jerusalem. That's where you find the Mount of Olives. So the Mount of Olives is very uh, familiar uh, to us in the Gospels because Jesus spent a lot of time there at the Mount of Olives. And the Mount of Olives is a mount. It's a hill, high hill that is overlooking the city of Jerusalem. But in between the, those places... The city of Jerusalem, Mount of Olives, you have the Kidron Valley, and then there's the Kidron Brook there. And so that's where David passed and, and all the people that were with him. And, 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 and the Bible says that they wept with a loud voice okay, because of the situation um, that, um, that they are in. Okay, and um, so we find some points here. David and his people, including children, cross the Kidron Valley. And uh, also we find that our text, uh, the verses that we read, show who David's real friends are. And the amazing thing is that many of them are not even Jews, but Gentiles. We read earlier, you have the, uh, the Cherethites, the Pelethites, the Gittites, and even Ittai. Ittai was uh, an Ittite and uh, Gittite. And so um, uh, they went with David. They went with David. And uh, let's move on. Verse 24. And lo, Zadok also and all the Levites were with him, bearing the Ark of the Covenant of God. And they set down the Ark of God, and Abiathar went up until all the people had done passing, passing out of the city. And the king said unto Zadok, Carry back the Ark of God into the city. If I shall find favor in the eyes of the Lord, he will bring me again and show me both it and his habitation. But if he thus say, I have no delight in thee, behold, here am I. Let him do to me as seemeth good unto him. So we find that even the priests, the priests also want to go with David. But David sends them back to Jerusalem. Okay, uh, David said, no, you have to go back. Um, we find here that uh, David was really uh, depending on God. No, he does not want his dependency to be on the ark. Now we find that... Um, uh, in previous experiences of, of Israel, um, they had the ark going before them. In this case, the priest uh, wanted to go with David, but David said, no, you go back to Jerusalem. The house of the Lord is there. You stay there. And uh, I don't want to be uh, putting my dependency on, on, on the ark, but I'm going to depend on the Lord himself. So he puts his life in God's hands. In this case, and Lord, it's it's up to you. Now remember, uh, David had a restored relationship with God at this point. Uh, we find that even m several of the Psalms uh, were written during this time, and and he had he 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 got back uh, to the Lord and and was having a good relationship with God, and and so he was putting his life on God's hand. He was trusting his. Uh, God is trusting uh, his life on God's hands. Also, David wants to leave a spy network in Jerusalem. That's what he told the priest. You know, um, he said that uh, you go back and whatever you hear, whatever information you can get uh, uh, from Absalom and from what's going on, you can you can uh, send them back to me. You can always relay uh, the message to me. You can send messengers and they can uh, deliver the message to me. Uh, so that's that's what happened. Now let's uh, go to verse number 30. And David went up by the ascent of Mount Olivet and wept as he went up and had his head covered. And he went barefoot and all the people that was with him covered every man his head. And they went up weeping as they went up. So we find here that David was mourning. He was uh, grieving and he was weepy he was crying and he covered his head it's a sign of mourning and he went barefoot the king he was walking barefoot up the mount of olives because of uh, his grief 
and even all the people that uh, were with him they covered their head as they went up and they were weeping and then ito pa verse 31 and one told david saying ahithophel is among the conspirators with absalom and david said oh lord i pray thee turn the counsel of ahithophel into foolishness remember ahithophel uh, used to be David's uh, counselor. He was uh, David's advisor and uh, he switched sides. He went to Absalom. He went to support Absalom. And so uh, when David learned about this, it was like a stab in the back. You know? It's like a, a uh, 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 betrayal para kay David. And so he just prayed to the Lord and said, oh God, I pray thee, O Lord, turn the counsel of Ahithophel into foolishness okay? and uh, so you know prayer and so uh, we find that David walks barefoot he was grieving and then uh, he learns of Ahithophel's betrayal and um, uh, but it's interesting it's interesting um, there's a question here isn't Ahithophel Bathsheba's grandfather um, so Many Bible teachers are saying that it is the same person as grandfather of Bathsheba. Now remember the sin of David with Bathsheba. And uh, because in uh, 2 Samuel chapter 11, verse 3, when, when David was inquiring, uh, who was this woman? And one said, is not this Bathsheba the daughter of Eliam, the wife, the wife of Uriah the Hittite? So Bathsheba was the daughter of Eliam. Actually, Eliam is one of David's mighty men, as was Uriah. And then we find in 2 Samuel chapter 23, uh, we will learn that lesson in the next few weeks. But uh, let me just read 2 Samuel chapter 23, verse 34. It says there when, when they were uh, naming those mighty men, mighty men of David, uh, in verse 34 it says, Eliam the son of Ahithophel, the Gilonite. So we find that in chapter 15, chapter 14, we find that Ahithophel is mentioned there and he is from, uh, he's a Gilonite. So uh, it seems that Ahithophel is the father of Iliam, who was the father of Bathsheba. So that may be one reason. That may be a reason why uh, Ahithophel uh, decided to switch allegiance and support Absalom instead. But for David, it was really uh, it's like a stab. No? Uh, and uh, it was like a betrayal for David. So it's a painful, painful uh, experience. Okay, let's move on. Let's read verse 32. And it came to pass that when David was come to the top of the mount where he worshipped God, behold, Hushai, the archite, came to meet him with his coat rent and earth upon his head. Unto whom David said, If thou passest on with me, then thou shalt be a burden unto me. But if thou return to the city and say unto Absalom, I will be thy servant, O king, as I have been thy father's servant hitherto, so will I now also be thy servant, then mayest thou for me defeat the counsel of Ahithophel. So um, we find here that in spite of adversity, and David pauses and worships God on Mount Olivet. So the Bible says when he reached the top of the mount, he worshiped God, he prayed. Um, and, uh, and then at the same time, we find that uh, Hushai also came in. But um, actually, we, we can read this prayer in Psalm chapter 3 when he was fleeing from Absalom. Psalm chapter 3 verses 1 to 4, we find here, uh, uh, we get an insight of, of what David was was feeling and what was going through. Uh, he said, Lord, how are they increased that trouble me? Many are they that rise up against me. Many there be which say of my soul, there is no help for him in God, Selah. But thou, Lord, art a shield for me, my glory and the lifter up of my head. I cried unto the Lord with my voice and he heard me out of his holy hill, Selah. So that was his prayer. 
uh, when he was up at the Mount of Olives. And then um, Hushai came and Hushai also wanted to uh, go with David, but David advised him to go back to Jerusalem and, and, and present himself also as a counselor and advisor of Absalom and uh, so that he can um, help uh, counter okay, the counsel of Ahithophel. So that was David's uh, uh, purpose. That was David's strategy. And so in verse 37, he sent Hushai back. And so David, or, or Hushai, David's friend, came into the city and then Absalom came into Jerusalem. So Hushai went back to the city just about the time that Absalom came into Jerusalem. When Absalom came to Jerusalem, there was no fight, there was no war, there was no battle. Why? Because David fled already. So at this time, David was already uh, on the top of Mount Olive and they were moving out of the city. And so that's when Absalom came in. All right, so we find here, Again, David asks his friend Hushai to stay in Jerusalem to confound the council of Ahithophel. And then we find that Absalom now arrives in Jerusalem with his uh, followers and supporters and his army. Okay, and so now let's move into 2 Samuel chapter 16. 2 Samuel chapter 16, verse number 1. And when David was a little past the top of the hill, behold, Ziba, the servant of Mephibosheth, met him with a couple of asses saddled, and upon them two hundred loaves of bread, and a an hundred branches of bunches of raisins, and a hundred of summer fruits, and a bottle of wine. And the king said unto Ziba, What meanest thou these by these? And Ziba said, The asses be for the king's household to ride on, and the bread and summer fruit for the young men to eat, and the wine that such as be faint in the wilderness may drink. And so verse 3, the king said, Where is thy master's son? And Ziba said unto the king, Behold, he abided at Jerusalem. For he said, Today shall the house of Israel restore me the kingdom of my father. Then said the king to Ziba, Behold, thine are all that pertain unto Mephibosheth. And Ziba said, I humbly beseech thee that I may find grace in thy sight, my lord. O King. Okay, which leads us to point number two, beyond Mount Olives. So remember, they, they left Jerusalem, went down to the Kidron Valley, and then went up the Mount of Olive, and then beyond. They were uh, walking, they were traveling beyond, that's moving towards the wilderness and eastward. Okay, and so when they left Mount Olive, the Bible says David is met by Ziba. Now, if you can remember, Ziba was the servant of Mephibosheth. Remember the story where when, when David asked, is there uh, someone uh, from the house of Saul that I could extend or um, uh, do good to because of uh, Jonathan, okay, uh, his best friend. And so Mephibosheth was actually Jonathan's son. And uh, Ziba uh, was assigned okay, to serve Mephibosheth. So we find that David is met by Ziba, um, Mephibosheth's servant, and uh, he was bringing food with him, uh, fruits, um, donkeys, and wine uh, to, uh, for the people of David and uh, seemingly to help them. And so when David asks about uh, his master, Mephibosheth, then we find that Ziba lies about his master. Uh, sabi niya, oh, si Mephibosheth nagpaiwan sa Jerusalem because he knew that you left and so he's planning to take over the throne. He's going to get back the throne. But actually that was not true. Uh, as David would later find out uh, in chapter 17. But at this point, uh, David believes Ziba and uh, he actually gives Ziba all that had been given to Mephibosheth. Sabi niya, o sa'yo na, yung lahat ng binigay kong uh, blessing kay Mephibosheth sa'yo na, ibibigay ko na sa'yo. So David immediately believed without actually confirming it first. And maybe because of the situation, he was grieving, he was fleeing, and he saw the uh, kindness, the gesture of Ziba, and so he felt that, uh, he thought that Ziba was telling the truth, and so binigay uh, blessing came Ziba. However, David will later learn of Ziba's lie 
in chapter 17 and uh, we will find that out now he will find that out later on uh, but at this point hindi niya alam so he he believes Ziba uh, concerning Mephibosheth now let's continue reading verse number 5 and when king david came to bahurim behold there thence came out a man of the family of the house of Saul whose name was Shimei or Shimei the son of Gera he came forth and cursed still as he came and he cast stones at David and all and at all the servants of King David and all the people and all the mighty men were on his right hand and on his left and then verse 7 and thus said Shimei or Shimei when he cursed come out come out the bloody man and thou man of Belial the Lord hath returned upon thee all the blood of the house of Saul, in whose stead thou hast reigned. And the Lord hath delivered the kingdom into the hand of Absalom thy son. And behold, thou art taken in thy mischief, because thou art a bloody man. Wow! That leads us to point number three. At Bahurim, stoned by Shimei, Shimei. Okay? At Bahurim, Shimei curses David and throws stones at him. Now, Shimei, the Bible says, is of the household of Saul. He was not a direct uh, descendant of Jonathan, but uh, he was of the household of Saul. And uh, he begins to curse David as he saw David and the people walking and uh, throw stones at them. Can you imagine that? He was throwing stones and he was cursing them and Calichano and he he really believed that David uh, he accuses David of being a bloody man or a man of blood he really thought that David uh, uh, unlawfully uh, took away the, the, the throne from Saul but actually that is not true uh, she can remember David loved Saul very much he loved Jonathan very much he actually wept and grieved when he learned that both Saul and Jonathan were killed in battle. Uh, in fact, you know, at least twice, uh, sabi niya, I will not touch the Lord's anointed. No, he left everything to the Lord because he, he loved them, he respected them, and he was willing to wait, willing to wait a long time. And remember, he was anointed king while he was still a young man. And yet the Bible says he became king Okay, of Judah when he was already 30 years old. And he did not become king of the whole nation of Israel until he was 37 years old. So think about the, the period of time that David was waiting, waiting for God's timing. So what, what uh, Shimei was saying is not true, but yun yung paniniwala ni Shimei, you know? and so uh, he was throwing uh, stones at the king. And he was cursing him. And so he speaks of David's shedding of blood in terms of Saul and his house. So he was accusing David of uh, uh, killing Saul, which is not true. Okay, and then uh, in verse 9, Then said Abishai, Abishai, the son of Zeruiah. Okay, Zeruiah was uh, David's sister. And to the king, Why should this dead dog curse my lord the king? Let me go over, I pray thee, and take off his head. It's verse 9, verse 11. Let's jump to verse 11. And David said to Abishai and to all his servants, Behold, my son, which came forth out of my bowels, seeketh my life, meaning Absalom. How much more now may this Benjamite do it? Talking of Shimei. Let him alone, and let him curse, for the Lord hath bidden him. So we find that Abishai wanted to shut this man's mouth permanently by cutting off his head. But David refused permission. Abishai, Abishai and Joab were brothers. They were sons of Zeruiah, who was the sister of David. So actually, Joab and Abishai were David's nephews, but they were also David's generals. And so they said, Because he was cursing. It's so, uh, you know, obnoxious, you know? Once shouting and cursing and even throwing stones um, <clears throat> but David refused permission David is convinced of the sovereignty of God in all these matters uh, let the Lord you know take charge of that and we find the the attitude of David you know, 
Uh, again, uh, makikita natin doon yung, dito yung yung uh, response ni David. Um, since since that experience with Bathsheba, nag nagiba ang um, mindset ni David. And so, dito sabi niya, huwag na. Hayaan niyo na lang. Hayaan niyo na lang. And so, um, we read verse number 14. And the king and all the people that were with him came weary and refreshed themselves there. So they finally arrived at their destination. Weary from the physical and emotional aspects of this trek, they arrived at their destination. So, uh, that was... Uh, when they left Jerusalem. Okay, now let's shift the story. Now let's look at verse number 15. The scene shifts back to Jerusalem. Now remember, we uh, Absalom already arrived in Jerusalem and so the ship goes back there. Verse 15. And Absalom and all the people, the men of Israel, came to Jerusalem and Ahithophel with him. And it came to pass when Hushai, the archite, David's friend was come unto Absalom that Hushai said unto Absalom, God save the king, God save the king. So Hushai presented himself to Absalom. Verse 17, Absalom said unto Hushai, Is this thy kindness to thy friend? Why wentest thou not with thy friend? But nandito ka, but hindi ka doon. But wala ka doon. And Hushai said unto Absalom, Nay, but whom the Lord and this people and all the men of Israel choose, his will I be, and with him will I abide. Mm, 19. And again, whom shall I, should I serve? Should I not serve in the presence of his son, as I have served in thy father's presence? So will I be in thy presence. Okay, para siyang balimbing, ano? Sip, sip. But actually, uh, Inutusan siya ni David. Siya yung magiging spy ni David doon sa court or sa cabinet or sa mga counselors ni Absalom. Okay, so we find point number four, Absalom in Jerusalem. Okay, so we find there that Hushai declares his allegiance to and offers his service to Absalom. And uh, yun ang ginawa ni Hushai. Okay, let's continue reading verse number 20. Then said Absalom to Ahithophel, Give counsel among you what we shall do. So now they're in Jerusalem. What shall we do? And Ahithophel said unto Absalom, Go in unto thy father's concubines, which he had left to keep the house, and all Israel shall hear that thou art abhorred of thy father. Then shall the hands of all that are with thee be strong. So they spread Absalom a tent upon the top of the house, and Absalom went in unto his father's concubines in the sight of all Israel. Wow. Wow. But you know what? That was their um, culture. That was the way they do things. When, Whenever a king would conquer another kingdom, he would get everything, including the wives and the concubines, to show that he is now king. So we find some, some points here. No, Ahithophel's counsel to Absalom. Number one, sabi niya, possess David's concubines, thereby proclaiming himself king. So yun yung pinaka-stamp or tuldok niya doon na, uh, I am now the new king. I am even taking everything including the concubines. So taking the king's harem symbolized the taking of his place. His throne. So yun ang advice niya kay Absalom para lahat ng mga tao makikita nila yon at mapapabilib sila. And they would recognize now Absalom as the new king. Okay, so uh, yun ang ginawa nila. And then, but <clears throat> we will also find that Absalom's actions regarding David's wives or concubines is also the fulfillment of Nathan's prophetic words in chapter 12, verses 11 and 12. In Second Samuel chapter 12, verse 11 and 12, ito po yung sabi ng, uh, ng prophet Nathan to David, Thus saith the Lord, Behold, I will raise up evil against thee out of thine own house, and I will take thy wives before thine eyes, and give them unto thy neighbor. And he shall lie with thy wives in the sight of this son, for thou didst it secretly 
but I will do this thing before all Israel and before the sun. Wow. So that's what happened. That's what Absalom did. And uh, sad, grieved David. It broke his heart, but he loved his son. He did not want to fight with his son. And so he fled with his people and those people that were loyal to him. Uh, and Absalom took over. He's now the reigning king in Jerusalem. But of course, the story does not end there. Uh, we will continue our series, uh, our story next Sunday. But uh, for our conclusion, here are some points. Uh, four points that I'd like to share with you. Number one, let us never deceive ourselves into thinking that our sin is worth the price. Our sin, whether it's our sin, uh, David's sin, or even Absalom's sin, um, it's not worth. It's not worth it. So let us not be deceived. Number two, if David could have seen where his sin was leading, he would never have chosen the path he did. That's true. And that is true for all of us. You know, that's why we need the wisdom of God. We need the understanding of God so that we would know that when we are being tempted and when we are being uh, tested, that we would know that if we commit this sin, it's going to lead us somewhere. It's going to lead us farther from the Lord. It's going to lead us into destruction. And so uh, we should we should have that spiritual vision and we should always uh, have God's word in our hearts, hidden in our hearts. That's why it's important for us to read the word of God. It's important for us to study the word of God. That's what we're doing in our Sunday school. That's why we make it an effort to really read the word of God. Because uh, this is not our word, this is God's word. And Psalm 119 verse 11 says, Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. So uh, it's important that we learn the word of God. And so we would know where sin is going to lead us. And then, number three, let us learn from David's mistake. Rather than learn the hard way as he did, that sin never pays. You know, Sin is fun. Sin is enjoyable for a season, but there will always be consequences. There will always be the penalty of sin. And we praise the Lord that uh, Christ died for our sins. And those of us who have received Christ as our Savior, He has forgiven us of our sins, He has taken away our condemnation, and He has given us eternal life. We praise the Lord. But in our day-to-day -day life, we make decisions every day. We, uh, we are confronted with with sin and we are being tempted and tested and our enemy wants to destroy us and so we should learn from David's mistake we should learn from David's experience sin does not pay and so uh, never forget that and then number four yet in his sovereignty God was using these very difficult times to bring David to greater maturity in his faith and that is true in fact Several of the Psalms that, that David wrote, uh, that we can find in the book of Psalms, he wrote it while he was going through this difficult time, where he was going through this uh, trial, when he was going through these challenges in his life. Uh, we can find in uh, Psalm chapter 3 and the other Psalms where David poured out his heart toward God, as, as, to God as he was uh, experiencing these things. But we know that God is in control and God has a purpose. And we know that Romans 8, 28 says, for we know that all things work together for good to them who love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. And so let's learn our lesson, learn it well, put it in our hearts and practice it in our lives. Okay, well, I trust that you learn things today from the word of God and that God has spoken to your heart. And I trust that you will take this, digest it, how the Spirit to lead your life according to His will. Next Sunday, lesson number 16, The Darkest Days of David's Life. But we will find that next Sunday. So again, let me invite you to join us uh, next Sunday, same time, uh, as we continue to learn uh, God's Word. All right, let's, let's pray. Father, Lord, thank you for your Word. And again, we just thank you and praise you for this time. Thank you, Lord, for speaking to our hearts. 
And Father, we pray now that you would take these words and uh, that we would apply it in our hearts. And Lord, may, may we continuously seek your will. May we continuously obey your will and help us to grow in our faith. Again, Lord, thank you for each one that's, that's joined us today. Bring us back again next Sunday as we continue our series. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you very much and God bless you.